from Asoka Universe to the Serie A and Southeastern European League review. I'll add two more, Turkey and Greece, like I did last week. And again, like with uh, Southwestern Europe, Turkey has a game tonight. I'm recording this on Monday. You will get this on Tuesday morning. So uh, tomorrow in my Bundesliga review, you will get the result of that game because it can have serious implications on uh, the table, similar as in Portugal. Um, Serie A weekend got seriously cut short. Coronavirus, I think that's the big story in Italy at the moment. In northern Italy, 60 kilometers from Milan and I think about 50 kilometers from Venice, two towns have been found many infections there putting the, those towns under quarantine and all that kind of stuff. I can tell it's a little bit close for comfort here in Austria and the nerves are really high in Austria. They stopped the train coming from Italy yesterday because there were people coughing and blah, blah, blah. It's a mess. I'm actually quite calm about it. I say to my colleagues, I'm less worried about the virus, especially if you look at the statistic in my age group and so on, the mortality rate is uh, really, really tiny. I'm more worried that politics will make an entire mess out of it and use it to their advantage um, instead of really helping people. But let's go back to Serie A to happier th things. Although the weekend for me personally was not all that happy wearing my Juventus jersey because Juventus is one of the bigger winners of this weekend. Uh, it started Friday evening with a very interesting Brescia-Napoli game. Again, the only thing I saw was a Saturday evening game and even there I fell asleep between Fiorentina and Milan. Everything else is highlights. I said since this is a weekend that is not so full with um, uh, great uh, games. I saw three live more or less. Uh, that I, uh, This is a week weekend that I fully dedicate to my family as much as I can. And because the next weekend will be crazy and during the week there's crazy stuff going on. So... Um, Highlights is what I'm talking about here. Brescia Napoli. Uh, funny scene at the at, at beginning when you know the teams line up in the tunnel and there's Balotelli talking to Insigne uh, and Insigne is standing next to the ball boy who is almost as tall as Insigne is and kind of asking, are you playing on the little one? And they had a good laugh out, 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 out of it. And a good laugh had initially Brescia who took the lead in the 26th through Chancellor. After Tonali assists, so the all the injuries that they had against Juventus a little bit is coming uh, back, and Brescia, yeah, maybe a little bit lucky, but they had the overall lead. But uh, right after half, they make a penalty foul. That Insigne, yes, he was playing, can pull back. Can I say again how much I hate those Napoli jerseys? And five minutes later, Fabian Ruiz with a fabulous shot in the corner. I mean, you cannot do it much better. A few minutes later, he tried the exact same thing, but this time the goalkeeper was uh, on, on target. Unfortunately, Brescia cannot find anything and Napoli gets another win and they are definitely on the up for now. Then uh, on Saturday, the early game was Bologna Udine. I was with my wife in a shopping mall and in a cafe I saw that game on, which I found very curious because at the same time uh, there was Bundesliga. So, But yeah, Bologna Udine. Udine took a lead through Okaka after a nice Depaul assist. Had the better of the uh, first half. However, in the second half, the longer the game went, the more Udine hung back and really couldn't relieve themselves much any, any, anymore. And in stoppage time, all the work of Bologna paid off and Palacio gives them... Um, an equalizer. At 6 o'clock we had the Spal against Juve matchup. A ah, potential trap game, although Spal is not all that great uh, at the moment, but you know, those are the games you don't take easy. I found it very in interesting that the blue and white Spal could play against an all blue Juventus. It's not my favorite blue, I think there should be a little bit yellow in there, but it was uh, quite a good game. Early on you thought already that uh, Ronaldo had given Juve a lead, but the uh, goal was called off by a fraction of side. Ronaldo gets his goal after a nice assist by Cuadrado, make it 1-0 in 39th and he continues his scoring streak. I think it's 11 games in a row, 12 games in a row, something like that. Um, in the second half, Dybala makes a through ball to Ramsey in the 60th and Ramsey lobs it very sweetly over the goalkeeper. Make it 2-0. Game done and dusted. Nope. He will give away a penalty. Petania. Makes the goal and maybe it could have turned, but Juventus hangs on to the win. 
which is something that Milan could not do. Milan had the better of the first half. And I have to say, uh, before I get all bent out, 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 out of shape of how you can throw this game away, Milan was a slightly better team, especially the longer the game went on in the first half, was a, was, was a better team. That the goal by Ibrahimovic call, um, was called back, I found a little bit of a tra travesty because I tried hard to see the handball. It is not conclusive and even it, hit, it hits him here. The, he made an individual effort, pure will, pure determination to get that goal. I was fuming that this was called back. It's one of the two, it was the second worst, in my opinion, second worst decision of um, the saddest as I said, I was not happy about that one. Yes, red and black glasses on me, I understand. Maybe if you're a Fiorentina fan, I have sympathies for Fiorentina, but if you're a Fiorentina fan, you probably will say, yes, it was a clear hand, hand, handball. But let's be honest, um, that handball did not give him any advantage. My personal opinion. Rebic in the 56th, fine, he already missed a big one in the first half ahead of. He makes in the 56th, he makes it 1 0, um, where he takes a great <laughs> a mistake from uh, Caceres, who plays the ball directly to him, he just needs to pull it home. Gets a deflection though. Um, and it's 1-0 Milan. And then, like last on Thursday, Milan cannot make the freaking second goal. There's even a red card given for to Dalbert um, after VAR. You had 10 men up and you give away a penalty that Pulga converts to 1-1 and then you even have to be lucky to not lose that one. Frustration. Frustration, I have to say. This is something that I don't un 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 understand. You should get this game home and in, in a try. I admit I didn't see the last 30 minutes because after the 1 0, I think I completely fell asleep. My wife found me on the couch watching. <laughs> um, and then Sunday, that's where the whole coronavirus hit and everything that was in Northern Italy got cancelled or postponed, let's put it that way. Uh, and I would assume that. They will uh, be played at a later point, maybe a midweek point, and potentially behind closed doors. I know that they are thinking that Juve Inter is played behind closed doors, which is also coming next weekend, as far as I know. And then um, the other games too, uh, maybe even the Europa League game, uh, home game for Inter, will be behind closed doors, which would be a shame. But two games were played, the two Roman teams could play. Genoa, the first goal by Lazio. That was another one with pure determination. The way Marosic in the second minute goes through the through defender, there's just a pure will to score that goal. Um, and Lazio had more chances, but there was also a post hit by uh, Gank Gagner. So Gagner was a little bit in the, in the game. Immobile makes it then 2-0 and you think, yeah, the game is done and dusty, but Casata pulls one back and the game was open again. And he needed a goal by Cataldi to calm things down and only a Crescito penalty late maybe gave some hope to Genoa, but Lazio hangs on and gets a vital win. And guess who's back on winning ways as well? Roma, 4-0 over Lecce. Cengiz uh, Ina, Mkhitaryan, Dzeko, although they had to look at the OVR. And Kolarov scored the four goals and Roma is back on winning ways. So now in a rather uneven table, Juve is still in the lead, a point ahead of Lazio. Inter could not close the gap, so it looks sizable now. But, you know, we have to wait how the game against Sampdoria will play. Same thing goes to Atalanta. Roma temporarily moves up. Ah, does, doesn't even move, move up, I got my moves close to Atalanta. Napoli moves up and Milan even with the draw moves up. Again, it's not really big because Hellas Verona has not played and all, you know, it's it's a mess, this table. I don't actually want to comment it too much. Uh, Sampdoria would need points against Inter because it's Genoa, Brescia and Spal that are on the bottom of the table. Let's go over to Turkey. I tell you, the Turkish league, um, every weekend we get new standings it's really 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 uh interesting how what's happening there we had Sivaspor getting back on winning ways winning one nil against alanya sport that was already a big matchup then Bejiktas manages to draw a 2-2 against Trabzonspor, and at the same time galatasaray wins 3-1 at fenerbahce huge 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 game and um if i see now the um 
the goals, it was a penalty through Cruz against Fenerbahce lead, then Donk in the fourth, it equalized, and then very late Falcao from a penalty, and Onyekuru in stoppage time, make it 3-1 for Galatasaray, gets them right back into the game. And I just saw the games are currently happening, but it's still 65th minute at the moment. Uh, Basakshias is at a 1-1 against Rizespor. If that would hold, they will not be able to move further up but with a win they could take the top of the table uh, just for completeness sake as of now Kasim Pasov uh, is leading 1-0 over Denis Lispor but I'll fill you in in the Bundesliga review. In the table for now Trabzonspor 45 points ahead of Galatasaray and Sivaspor all with 45 points. Crazy isn't it? If Bajak here wins they would move up in first spot Alanya Spor is in fifth spot uh, and Fenerbahce in sixth and now Besiktas is back. This is so tight in Turkey. It's absolutely the most um, even league that we have at the moment. Unfortunately, even is not something I can say about uh, Greece at the moment. Uh, although Bananakos only gets a 1-1, um, Ike beats OFI 3-0, but of course the big one was Pauk against Olympiakos, which was decided by an own goal. Uh, from an Olympiakos player. I have not heard much. My subscriber Yanis told me the park was not good in pro. Olympiakos did slightly deserve the victory. I read a little bit that the game was very slow because there was a lot of pressure on everyone. And I guess this is exactly the type of game that I was expecting. I have not heard yet about the punishment. Uh, maybe let me quickly check. No, unfortunately I could not find anything yet. But... Um, We'll see how, 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 how this will go. At the moment, Olympiakos is five points clear. There will be a player with the top six teams, but they keep the points. So this five-point lead seems, the way this season has been going, kind of insurmountable almost. And the, given the points deduction that might come, doesn't look all that friendly. Ajax and Panathinaikos are clearly third and fourth. If you have more news... Keep me posted. I will add all this info back into the Bundesliga review tomorrow if I know more. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, man. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, Wish you a wonderful day. Bye.